Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, we're going to have a look on how to save resources in Affinity Photo to work smoother and have smaller files. My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So, of course, there's a lot of reasons why Affinity Photo can be resource hungry in the areas of the CPU, the GPU, the RAM, and also the file size, which has impact on your hard drive. And of course, today hard drives are cheap, so that might not be a big problem, but also it has an impact when you want to share these files with your friends or colleagues. So when you have to upload hundreds of megabytes or even several gigabytes, it might take a long time and also take a lot of your cloud storage. So maybe you want to have some smaller files. So first of all, let's look at what takes a lot of CPU and GPU power when you work on your file and makes the process slow and choppy. And of course, one of the biggest offenders here are live filters. So down here, we have the live filters. When we click on that, especially resource hungry are the blur filters, especially Gaussian blur. And when you use one right now, I'm using depth of field. You can see here, I can set up a nice effect and it looks beautiful. I can do a lot of cool stuff with that. But when I do that and I leave it on as a live filter, it will always use a lot of resources while I want to work on the rest. And that makes the process more slow and choppy. So instead, what we could do to save on resources is either that we use the same filter up here, but this is going to be permanent. So this is going to be destructive and you might not want to have that. So an alternative for that would be that you set up your live filter in the way that you want it to be and then right click on that and here say merge visible. And what merge visible does is it looks at all the visible layers that are turned on right now, everything that is visible to you in the canvas right now, and it will rasterize it into one layer. This is non-destructive because it will make a copy on an extra layer. I can now turn off the live filter because now I have this copy that I can turn on and off and it doesn't use any more computing power. So that's very helpful for me to have that. And at the same time, I have preserved all the settings I have made before. So at a later point, I can still delete that layer that I have merged and then use the live filter again. I would suggest that when you do that, you give this layer here a specific name so you know that this is a placeholder and not meant to be used in the final export uh, in the final product. Another thing that can have a lot of impact is too many layers. Like you can see here, my hero has a lot of layers in here. There's a lot of assets in here. Also in original size, I haven't reduced them in size. This can take a lot of resources. So of course, what you want to do first is to create a group. And for that, select all of the layers that concern that part of your image. So you can see here, I've selected all of my hero layers. And to select them, you click one of them, hold the shift key and then click on the lowest one and then everything in between as you can see here gets selected and then you can either right click and say group or as you can see here you can also click Control g to create that group now if you do that it's really important that all these layers are stacked on top of each other and there's nothing in between because if there might be something in between and it's not part of the group then this group will either sit below that or on top of that and that will not work anymore as that effect. So you can only group together things that actually are on top of each other as layers, really important. Now, if you have done that, you can simply right click and then duplicate that group and then turn one off and rasterize the other. Right click, rasterize, in this case, not merge visible, that's important and this First of all, we'll turn everything in the group into one pixel layer, as you can see here, and also everything is 
rendered in the size you see it in your file. So even if you had larger resolution assets inside of that group, now they are smaller and you're using that one pixel layer and the other group, everything in that is turned off so it doesn't use as much resources. So that's really helpful. Now, another thing that's interesting to us is the usage of RAM and also of the file size. So let's go here to our original picture. And then I have another layer here with a nice cute cat picture. You can see it's high resolution and it's even bigger than my original file. So I can of course make that smaller and then place it somewhere in my image. Now here's the important part. Just because I made this smaller here by using these handles on the side does not influence the resolution of that cat image. It's just displayed to me in a smaller size and that's important important because if you have a lot of high resolution files that you simply drag to be smaller so you change the screen size but you don't change the resolution it will still take a lot of RAM and it also will slow down your computer because it uses a lot of resources so keep that in mind again the simple solution for that is to rasterize that. But in that case, again, rasterizing is a destructive measure. So when you do that, let's do this here. I right click on that and say rasterize. Now it has been rasterized to this size inside of my canvas. And that means when I now resize it again, you can see that now the cat is pixelated and it's blurry because it doesn't have the high resolution anymore. So that's very important to keep that in mind when you do that. And another thing you want to keep in mind, and this is a little bit more abstract, is down here you have a history with all of the steps you have done so far. And now the important part here is that just because you've rasterized that layer and now it's smaller does not mean that immediately your RAM is going to be freed up by not using that original resolution anymore because it's still in the history. So what you need to do is to save the file close it and then open it up again and then the RAM is free and sometimes even that might not help because the history might still be there. So in that case what you can do to get rid of the history is that you go to file save as. This makes a new file. You save that, you open that up again and then the RAM is not used and this is actually a smaller file in here. And by the way, save as is really a very good way to do that because then you have a backup copy. So before you rasterize multiple layers to make your file smaller, save a copy and then rasterize all these files so you have one that has your original resolution images and assets in there and then you have one that is more resource friendly and you can work with that but you can still go back to the other file with the bigger resolutions. One interesting side note here is that in Affinity Photo it is important how many different files or assets you're using. If you're using the same one, it doesn't enhance the file size by much. So you can see here I have this image, I can make it smaller and then I can make all these copies. And when you save that, it will not take much more memory on your drive as if you only had one of them. It's a little bit bigger, but it's not 10 times bigger. It's really interesting that Affinity Photo understands that this is still just one file and then you have these digital copies. I hope this was interesting for you and thank you very much for watching. See you in one of my next videos. Bye.